Strange but true stories, tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. Folklore or history? Fictional or real? Imagined or seen? Creatures have haunted humans since the beginning of time. As soon as man could draw or write, he began recording what he had seen in the dark shadows. There is a report from a late 17th century ship captain about a creature he called the rake. It is often described as tall and pale, with hollow black eyes seeming to cause harm, either physical or psychological. The following two accounts tell of encounters with a creature very similar to what people call the rake. My house has always been creepy. Growing up, I've had unexplained experiences, starting from the time when I was four. I live in rural Kentucky in a coal mining town that always seems to be at least five years behind the rest of the world. The town is nestled in a thick forest of trees that have been standing there for many generations. We are surrounded by mountains, and there are several ponds nearby. There are lots of weird things that seem to happen around our town. Because of that, I was never really allowed to watch any spooky stuff on television when I was growing up. My family had experienced a lot of weird things in our house, especially my mom. I remember one night, though, when we didn't adhere to that rule of not watching scary stuff, and we watched a story about Waverly Hills Sanatorium, which is not too far from us in Louisville, Kentucky. It was quite freaky, and... Me still being a little kid, I was upset by a lot of things that were talked about in the documentary. I was still young enough that I slept in mom's bedroom, and even then, I still had trouble sleeping that night. At three o'clock in the morning, I woke up with the strange feeling of something watching me. I felt compelled to roll over and look around the room. I was hoping to not find anything, put my mind at ease, and go back to sleep. Unfortunately, that was not the case. As I rolled over, I saw a large creature crouching over my mom. It was tall, but hunched like it couldn't even stand up straight. It had really pale skin, and it was so thin, I could see bones sticking out under the skin. It had long claws hanging from both hands. Its face looked sunken with nothing but black holes where the eyes should have been. It didn't have much hair that I could see except for a few sprigs coming out the top of its head. I was scared, and I did the only thing I could think of as a little kid to protect myself. I rolled over and covered myself up head to toe with the covers, as if a sheet and blanket would protect me from whatever this was. I just hoped and prayed that the creature was only from my imagination and that it would leave us alone. I don't remember going back to sleep that night, and I never took another peek. The sun rose, and my mom woke up, complaining of pain in her side. She looked at her leg for the source of the pain, and we both saw huge claw marks down the side. It was three deep wounds, which were extremely inflamed and still oozing blood. I felt horrible. I knew what had done that to her, and I hadn't done anything to help prevent it. I saw the creature again a few months later. I woke up to find the creature slumped in the corner on my side of the bed. It was watching me sleep. I covered myself up again immediately, but this time got the courage to peek out and found it still looking at me. I'm not sure when it went away because I didn't dare look again. It was horrifying knowing this creature or entity was crouched in my corner. It changed the feeling in the room. It felt like complete evil. We still live in the same house, though I'm a teenager now and sleep in my own room. My mom complains constantly about the nightmares she experiences. She talks about being watched by a strange creature. She dreams about things hiding in the paintings. She's spoken about dreams of things coming from the ceiling. Our cats refuse to stay in that room if the door is shut. I've done a little research, and it sounds like I may have experienced what others have called a rake, but I can't be certain. I just know that I can't wait until the day that I can move out of this house 
and leave this creature, whatever it is, behind. It had been a great day. It was my birthday, and it was nonstop festivities from the start. I opened presents in the morning. My dad made us special waffles for breakfast, along with bacon and eggs. After breakfast, my mom and dad started preparing my birthday lunch, which was set to be a family feast. Aunts, uncles, cousins, friends would all be coming over later in the day with pies and cakes and other tasty desserts. Around two, all the family and friends had arrived, and we sat down to eat. Stuffed from all the amazing food and desserts, we spent the rest of the afternoon lazing around and talking for the next several hours until it started to get dark. By 8 o'clock, everybody had gone home. The food was put away, and there was absolutely no thought of eating any more that night. I called up a friend of mine and said I was heading over in a few minutes. It's about a 10-minute drive if you take the back roads to get there. He lived in a gated community built around a large private lake and all the roads in the community sort of spiral around the lake. There are four entrances to the neighborhood where he lives, and my friend lives on the outer edges of the development. The houses were spread out and had long driveways so that you really couldn't see them very well from the road. Everybody had their porch lights on, and those were visible, but that was about it. There weren't any street lights in the neighborhood either. It was a nice evening. I had my window cracked just a little to breathe in the fresh night air. I typically listen to music while I drive, but for some reason, I can't remember why, I didn't have anything playing. Oh well, I must have just been enjoying the quiet after the noise of having my family and friends around all day. I was getting close to my friend's house. I was going by a section of road where there were empty fields on both sides with woods recessed back from the road and a house or two nestled back in those woods. I noticed what appeared to be a person walking in my direction up ahead. The speed limit in the neighborhood was 20 miles per hour, and even if you wanted to go faster, you really couldn't because there were speed bumps like every 50 yards or so. So as I approached this walker driving slowly, it came into full view. And I keep saying it because it was not a person at all. It stood on two legs and its legs were really long and so were its arms. The arms were longer than a normal person's arms hung down, and it appeared muscular and strong, but very lean. I estimate that it was at least seven feet tall and with light-colored skin, whitish, yellowish, or grayish in color. I didn't see any hair or fur, but I did notice some texture to the skin. I could tell it wasn't smooth. Its face had small features, but its jaw and mouth were notably large, and it had some pointy things, horns maybe, coming out of its head. It was a quick scan, but I noticed a lot about this strange creature simply because I had never witnessed anything like it. As my car pulled alongside it and I looked out the driver's side window, I was thankful at this point it was only partially opened, it stared down at me. It opened its mouth wide and screamed this chilling, shrill scream that I will never forget. It was both a high-pitched shriek and a deep guttural growl at the same time. I hit the accelerator and got moving, not hitting the brakes for the next speed bump. I nearly got airborne as I drove over it, forgetting to turn into my friend's driveway and I just kept right on going. I exited the community and drove home as fast as I could get there. Once I got home, I called my friend and told him what I had seen and to be on the lookout for this creature in his neighborhood. I thought about that a lot over the next several days, writing down the description as best I could so I wouldn't forget any detail. I kept thinking that if my window had been down all the way, then it would possibly have tried to touch me or grab me or taken me. I'm certain that if I had lingered any longer, it had evil intentions. I can't figure out exactly what I saw that night, but I would love to hear if anybody has any ideas. This has been another Strange But True Stories. Any ideas on what these two witnessed? Have you seen anything similar? Let us know by sending us an email to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. Let us know what you thought of this story in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and sign up for notifications so you know exactly when the next video drops to the channel. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Steve White. Until next time.